Hi everyone, welcome to Kinemark. In this tutorial, we shall look at the design of a simple monopole antenna using HFSS. Let us quickly look at the design specification. We will design a monopole antenna for the frequency 88 MHz to 108 MHz. So we need the center frequency for the design of the monopole. So we are going to consider our center frequency FCU to be 88 plus 108 all over 2 and that will give us 93 megahertz which is equivalent to 0, 0.0 which is equivalent to 0 0.093 gigahertz so we can go ahead and calculate our wavelength the wavelength is given by lambda is equal to t over f but we know that t which is the speed of the em wave is equal to 3 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second. So our wavelength is equal to 3 times 10 to the power 8 all over 0 0.093 times 10 to the power 9. So we are going to have 3225.81 millimeters for our wavelength. But since the monopole is also called the quarter wave pool, we will take one quarter of the wavelength. That is lambda on 4 is equal to 3225.81 millimeters on four that will give us 806.4525 millimeters so this is going to be the length of our monopole but in our design we are considering designing the monopole using a cylinder in the hfss design of the monopole antenna we will consider using the cylindrical object and so we have to specify the radius of the cylinder the radius of the cylinder is giving us r less than lambda on 20. Our lambda which is already 3225.81 mm is now divided by 20 that will give us 161.2905 so since we are saying the radius should be less than 161.2905 we will consider r which is the radius to be equal to 150 millimeters so now we can go into the hfss software to design our antenna we can now start our design by inserting a cylindrical object that will act as our monopole over here we can change the default name of the cylinder to monopole and then assign the values we got from calculation we had the radius of our monopole to be 150 millimeters and then the height of the monopole was 806.4525 millimeters. So we can resize it so it could fit the workspace. Now we can see that our monopole is drawn. It's just a mere cylinder. So we have to assign a material to it. And the material we are going to assign to it is a perfect electric conductor. So we come to the monopole and then click on material, we edit it and then over here we type PEC and then we can click on OK. OK, so now perfect electric conductor has been assigned to the cylinder we drew. So now the next thing we are going to do is that we are going to draw the feed line. But to do that we can see from here that our cylinder is located at the center position so we can elevate it using the dimension of the radius that's 150 millimeters okay so we have our cylinder 150 millimeters above the center position so now we are going to draw the feed line in drawing the feed line we are supposed to change the plane in changing the plane we come here and then click on the yz plane so now we have to use a rectangle as our feed line so you click on the rectangle and then click any part here to draw We can now resize the feed that we've drawn to fit the diameter of the cylinder. 
So again, over here, we can change the default name to feed. And then change the dimension to. So for the Z, we are looking at minus 150. And then because the radius is 150 millimeters, obviously the diameter is going to be two times that. So we have 300 millimeters. And then we can keep this coordinate system that way. So now we can see we have it fitted here. We can change the transparency of the monopole and that of the feed and also assign a different color to the feed say red Now, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to draw our ground plane. So the ground plane is going to be below the feed line. So we have to use the XY plane. And then we select our rectangle again. We can choose a reasonable dimension for our ground plane, but we have to make sure it's at the center of the design. So we come here and change the name to ground plane. Maybe give it another color, blue, then make it transparent. So now let's set the dimension for our ground plane. We can choose the Y size to be 1000. The X size to be minus 1000. So to reposition is better. You can make this one 1000 on two. Minus 1000 on two. Now we have to excite the feed. So we select the feed and then we right click on it, assign excitation and then we choose the lamp port. we use a new integration line for it so we can draw from the bottom to the end of the feed you have to renormalize all modes now we have to assign a perfect e boundary to the ground plane We are almost through with our design. Now the next thing we have to do is to draw our radiation box. So 
so we choose the box this is our rad box then we can make it maybe green in color and then set the transparency to 0.87 we can see that our design is not in the radiation box so we have to find a way to get our design into the radiation box so we have to set new dimensions for the rad box let's assign size 1800 to the Z size to the Y we can assign minus 3000 the X size minus 3600 and then the positioning we can make the X position 2000 the Y position 1600 and then the Z position minus 150 but we can see that our design is almost complete but we don't have the monopole antenna outside the box again so we can still let it move towards the center by decreasing the Z dimension now we can assign a radiation boundary to our rad box You can see we have to also set up our analysis so we just come to the design come to analysis our solution frequency is 0 0.093 gigahertz Number of passes 20. We can now add our sweep frequency. Since we design for 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz our start frequency is 0 0.088 gigahertz and then our stop frequency is 0 0.108 gigahertz we can change the number of counts to maybe 110 Now, we can simulate our design. Now that we are done simulating our design, we can go ahead and plot the results. We will start by plotting the S11 graph. We can see that our S11 graph is below minus 10 dB for the entire operating band for the antenna. Let us rescale this minus 10. Okay. 
and then change the frequency 88 to 108 now we can see the graph clearly now our s11 is below minus 10 db for the entire operating band of 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz now let us go ahead and plot our vswr we can also see that our VSWR is less than 2 for the antenna we designed, which suggests a very good VSWR or a very good antenna. Let us now plot our 3D gain. We will do so by first of all inserting an infinite sphere for our far field setup. Okay, so we will take 5 from zero degree to 360 degree and then a step size of one and then theta from zero to 360 degrees for a step size of one i will come back to results create far field report and then we click on 3d polar plot over here we select gain and then we choose a db function the maximum gain for our antenna is 2.2815 which is a normal gain for normal monopole antennas the normal gain for monopole antennas is usually between 2 to 3 dB. So this is our gain for the antenna. Now we can go ahead and plot the radiation pattern for our antenna. We will look at the E plane and then we will look at that of the H plane. So we go back to our results. Click on create file fields report and then we see radiation pattern here. Click on the radiation pattern and then for the E plane we will set all angles for theta and then we will set 90 degrees for phi so we come here click on phi and then select 90 degrees this is our e plane for our antenna, we can now plot our H plane as well. So we go back to results, create far fields reports, and the radiation pattern. So over here, we are going to select gain and then choose all angles for phi and then choose 90 degrees for theta. Then we select gain phi and gain theta and choose db here create new report now this circle we have here is our h plane so we can go ahead and plot several parameters of the antenna you can find all of them over here thank you very much for watching this tutorial video and if you have any question you can leave it down in the comment section and also subscribe to kinemark for more tutorial videos thank you